Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can watch TVJ Live by downloading our One Spot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one, followed by the words Spot and Media. It's been a little over 24 hours since Denham Town has been declared as the second zone of special operations. Prime Minister Andrew Hulness said the area was chosen due to rampant acts of criminality. Our reporter Anthony Lugg has been monitoring the area and joins us with the latest. Anthony? Thanks, Andrea. No, I'm standing here along Beeston Street and Regent Street just outside the zone of special operations in Denham Town, West Kingston. Now, things here are similar to what we saw yesterday. We see the security checkpoints, as you can see, located just behind me. The security forces are doing their checks. Vehicles trying to get in and outside the community are being searched. Persons are also being asked to show their identifications, and that's also being recorded. I must point out that things along Spanish Town Road are similar as yesterday as well, business as usual. Now, we spoke to several persons since we got here and the feeling and from the persons, they're saying that they welcome the zone of special operations. I spoke to a man earlier, he said, in recent times there's been a lot of gunfire and since the police have been here, he feels a bit safer. I spoke to a lady and her children earlier and they said they weren't here when the zone was declared but ever since it's been declared and they went inside things have been very comfortable they say they slept in their bed last night and it was very 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 comfortable so things here are just as we saw yesterday and we'll be going into the community because We've just been given the go-ahead for the media to go inside, so we'll be bringing that to you. So until then, it's back to you, Andrea. Thank you very much, Anthony Lugg, our reporter in Denham Town, West Kingston, where the second zone of special operations has been declared. Two men were fatally shot on Tower Avenue, Olympic Gardens, about 10.40 last night. The deceased have been identified as 45-year-old Higler Glenroy Rowe and 37-year-old Richard Freighter. Reports are that the men who sell at a plaza in the community were patrons at a bar when three armed men entered with guns. The men opened fire, hitting Mr. Rowe and Mr. Fraser several times. They were pronounced dead at hospital. The Hunts Bay Police are asking anyone with information to contact them at 923-7111, Police 119 Emergency Number, or the nearest police station. Charges have been laid against a Westmoreland man who has been in custody for more than two weeks after he reportedly bit off a section of the air of a police officer. Adrian Creed appeared before the Westmoreland Parish Court yesterday to answer to a charge of wounding with intent. Attorney at law Michael Erkskin says his client is on a $150,000 bail with three sureties. He's, however, concerned about the tardiness of police officers in preparing Creed's file for court. I suspected that they were hoping for the injuries that the young man sustained to, to, you know, to, to disappear oh. before the matter came before the court. That is my suspicion. Yeah. I'm not saying that that is exactly what happened, but uh, that is my suspicion. Anyway, fortunately, we have managed to have photographs of the injuries that you received. Um, so, that is the situation. Mr. Creed was detained by cops on Saturday, October 7, after he allegedly refused to hand over keys to a motorcycle being quarried by the police. He said he had no such keys. During a scuffle, a piece of one of the police officers' air was bitten off. His family later staged a protest in front of the Negril police station, calling for Mr. Cree to get medical attention due to injuries reportedly received while he was in police custody. The matter returns to court in January. The Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, JCTU, which represents thousands of public sector workers, is warning members to brace for tough wage negotiations with the government. The government has offered a 3% increase in year one of the 2017-2019 contract period. This has been flatly rejected by groups representing public sector employees. 
For a second day, residents of Trinityville St. Thomas mounted roadblocks in their community to protest deplorable road conditions. The protest caused students and commuters to be stranded. The residents are calling on their elected representatives to fix the road network as it's costing motorists thousands of dollars on a daily basis. One taxi operator says lives are also being lost. The other day, I see a woman go to the hospital. Two, um, in the hours of the night, the taxi will bring her two times the man puncher. Because the mafia fixed him tired, the woman dead on the road. A pig bite a little youth up there, sir. I down the road, they say bleed out and dead okay. because the taxi man punched her. No By the time he made their jack up for put on him spear, the youth bleed out and dead. We all we need is little road, be a patrol. The vehicle man, they drive taxi to family. Every week we have for their part shop. More patrol than road family, I swear. Mr. MP, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Councillor, here we voice now. Give a little attention around Panda side there. With their back, we get forgotten now. We don't have no road road there. We see man and come jack a man dig up the road. And throw some dirty man all night and rain come and wash it out from January. All no, we can't run Panda this road in peace. No, not all. Every time we run Panda road there, either wheel pop off, we can't punch or something pop off it. We can't go. No, not all. You see me? None at all we can't go on this road here. This road here is a disgrace. Disgrace to society. We need road, especially Cedar Valley Road. Right? We need road. At times, Western Center must people to stop voting for none of the peace them on the wall on the vote until we get road. Residents say it seems as if the government has forgotten about St. Thomas. Not the pan the map. Trinity will not depend on nobody GPS, it's not the pan Google. We need to go back pan the map. St. Thomas, Mr. Holiness, we are beg you put St. Thomas pan the map. Because this is a road where people have to drive pan when you are regard my run, be tired by your reach. The way we are people tired to jerk up, jerk up. As high as my vehicle is, me hear the bottom man and it. It's a clum clum. The way they hold them deep. Them come in a July, them dig out the hold them deeper, throw them all the night, rainfall, wash out everything. You know deep that is somebody needs to do something about this man. We're sick of it, we're tired of it, we want a road. Right now we know we want a road still. I mean, if you go to Mark Bay, go start out some groceries for the kids, them, you know, but I have to still wait and protest with this right now because the road really stay bad for you, you know. We want a road for you, man. Enough is enough now, you know. We need road. But if you go to school late, they will go to my time late, say we punch everything. We need road for you, man. Enough is enough now. Meanwhile, residents of Round Hill St. Elizabeth are trying to help themselves, are again appealing to the authorities to fix bad roads in their community. They say overgrown vegetation is not only a threat to their safety, but it also affects their daily commute. Even the school youth, them, when they come out a man time, they wear one shoes come out, and when they come out, they have to change and put on a different, put on their school shoes to go at school, walk with rag. Sometimes it's the same shop here, so I uh, yes, so then left them something until they come back in the evening time. I, I'm 73 years old. I have to walk from down there, a one I have, and I can hardly see, and I have some big pot with them big so. As the road is in a very bad condition, so when they said, Women see get, that we could come together, whole community come together and assist to clean it. We clean it from, from the, the liquor park, main road, back to um, the Round Hill, Round Hill Road, back to the Cross Road, main road. They complain that none of the two members of parliament and none of the councillors has been providing assistance. One of the councillors explained the challenges in addressing their concerns. Most of the roads in Southwest St. Elizabeth, and particularly Pigeon Plains, are bad. They, are, they, they were bad before, and the constant rain has made them worse. 
Residents of New River St. Elizabeth are appealing for government assistance after another freak storm damaged properties on Monday. They gave different accounts about the time of the freak storm, but they all agreed on the damage it created. They say heavy winds blew several zinc roofs of houses. From about 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock. All the parade numbers. Couldn't get for more if they deal with certain things. I have to wait till it's done. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things went up. The breeze coming from that. And it come right across and lit down the tree them and the wire. Mm -hmm. And we inside and we couldn't come out. Mm -hmm. And inside of my house, we have pure water. Water come in and flood out the wall of the house. So I try to say we can do the repairing before the rain come back in the evening again. You know? Five, I look at two pieces of zinc whatsoever. I don't know what they can do for us still, but it's rough, you know. A team from the Jamaica Public Service went to the area to restore electricity on Tuesday. Residents say they did what they could to help themselves by clearing trees which blocked some of the roads and cutting others which caused damage or posed further threat. And it's time now for a look at what's coming up in this evening's Health Report. In the next edition of the Health Report, we look at the human papilloma virus, HPV. The routine methodologies are in practice, for example, screening. So all women are advised to have their pap smears done because once you do a pap smear, you can identify abnormal tissue and that can be treated. Of course, early diagnosis will definitely lead to possibly even a cure for precancerous lesions. That's the health report this evening in Primetime News. And now for today's health living tip. Be aware of how HPV is transmitted. Understand that you may have only one lifetime sex partner and still have HPV. Know that there is no conventional test to determine if you have HPV and get vaccinated. In sports, after making their first ever trip to the second round, Brownstown will be looking to make their presence count when they take on Rassiz in their second round clash at Jocks Hall today. The St. Anne-based team went to Montego Bay and shocked the 10-time former champions 1-0 in front of a partisan crowd on Saturday. It would be the biggest shocker if Brownstown hold on to knock out Rassiz out of contention. I think it was a rough one for us. Um... Tactically, I, th I think that we got it right. Um, we were able to we were able to nullify some of their threat areas, and we were able to, to to capitalize on some of the areas that we identified as weaknesses. And I think that's that's where we were able to to take control and to to get a positive result. Meanwhile, St. James High hold a comfortable lead going in their game against Mile Gully. The former champions won the first leg 4-0. Garvey Maseo hold on a 2-1 lead going in their second leg against Seaforth. It's a similar advantage for Central against Petersfield. Spot Valley and Fair Prospect are locked at a 2-all, while it's 1-all between Little London and Alston. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Do remember to join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.